Hi, I'm Dave Apsley. I'm a forester and a natural resources specialist for Ohio State University Extension. Today we're going to talk to you about how to use Google Earth Pro to map your woodlands. Google Earth Pro has some pros and some cons. Uh, the big pro is free. It's a, it's a mapping app for your desktop and you're capable, it's capable of importing GIS and GPS data. And you've got some historical imagery and there's more, more pros to this as you'll see as we go along. One of the cons, it's very difficult to import parcel boundaries. Um, it's hard to find those boundaries and import them, but I'll show you how you can do that if you're persist persistent. Other management planning features are not available and it's a little bit complicated to learn some of the advanced features, but it's very doable for most woodland owners. So here's the uh, web link to Google Earth Pro. If you'll just do googleearth.com slash earth, you're gonna have the opportunity to download Google Earth Pro and this little icon will appear on your desktop. So here's kind of a screenshot of Google Earth Pro. We'll zoom in a little bit, but uh, Google Earth Pro brings the world to your fingertips. And so what you do when you get Google Earth Pro to find your property, you're going to go to this search function. You're going to type in a, a very specific address. I always use Chapman, Ohio, because it's a little intersection uh, right near my property. And if I type Chapman, Ohio, and it brings me right to my property. But you'll, uh, you'll type in an address. And then basically, and that arrow got moved, if you uh, type the address in and you click on that little magnifying glass, it'll zoom right to your location. And then you can locate your property on the map. You've got some navigation tools on the upper right side of the screen. The north arrow will orient your map. I always like to keep north on the top of the map. That's just the way I learned it and what I'm accustomed to. Um, you can click on the arrows to kind of get different views. Um, you can pan around. You can even bring this little orange guy, click on him and bring him onto the map and it'll give you a street level view, usually from uh, public roads, not from necessarily private property. And then you've got these sliders to zoom in and out. So just get on Google Earth Pro, put in your address and navigate around. That's the biggest thing you can do to learn Google Earth is just to get on it and just navigate around. You can also use the dial on your mouse to zoom in and out as well. Another neat feature of Google Earth Pro on the upper left, you have a series of aerial photos um, from, I think this says 2012, this is an old image, but you've got fairly current uh, aerial imagery back to a little bit older, back to 1995. And the reason I bring this up is when you're doing certain mapping, having black and white, having different seasons can help you locate different things. And even being able to go back in time before something was built or before a field grew up into a forest, you know, you've got 25 years worth of mapping data there, which can be very useful to go back and look at old photos. For instance, on my property, this bottom land area that's a wetland now, that's got trees that are probably 30 feet tall, was completely open at the time this photo was taken. A more current image. Um, so it just gives you an idea to, and you can kind of look back in time, which is really a neat feature. You've got lots of toolbar bar features, toolbar features. And if you look across the top of the line, you can see add a place mark, which looks like a little thumbtack. Add a polygon, which is any basically shape that you want to trace onto the map is called a polygon. Add a path. So a path is anything linear. It doesn't have to be straight, but anything you want to know a distance for. And then there's a ruler and a measuring tool. When I first created this PowerPoint, that ruler was the only way to get distance and areas. But now there's some newer additions to Google Earth Pro that allow you to get areas very easily. So all you really need to do is click on an icon, this, in this case, a polygon, and you name it. So it'll bring up a little box and you add a name. You can select the color of the area that you're doing. You can either just outline it or you can fill it with the color. 
Um, I don't like to fill because I like to see the image behind it, but if you do fill, you can change it so it's more opaque and you can actually see through a faint color. It's kind of nice. And then I highly recommend changing the width of these lines to something a little thicker than one so that they're clearly visible on the map. And then you add the place mark, either click if it's just a place mark, if it's a boundary, it's going to give you the opportunity to trace around that boundary and drop points. And when you get to the very end, you're going to double click and you're going to have a polygon on the map. But remember, don't close that window until you've hit this button OK. Always hit OK. And sometimes this window will hide. If you've got multiple monitors, that window might be somewhere else and you might not be able to move around. Find that window, have it in a place you can work. And when you get the boundary traced, click OK. Here's kind of an image of me tracing around this uh, plantation. And you can see I'm not quite finished yet. I would eventually work my way around the boundary clicking. And when I get to the end, I double click and it would give me and save that polygon. And so I almost clicked on OK and that's just a screenshot. So that wouldn't, wouldn't gonna work here. Um, here's a good example of a polygon that I've recently traced on a 4-H camp property, which we're going to visit later. You can see all the little red dots are the clicks that I've made, and then at the very end, I double click, and it gives me the boundary. What I wanted to point out, a new feature in Google Earth Pro, or a relatively new feature, is measurements. You can actually click on miles if you want the distance around the perimeter, or if you want the area, you can change it from acres to square feet or whatever. And then when we hit OK, that acreage is going to be saved with that polygon, or that distance is going to be saved with that path. So if you think about it, that's a great feature. If I want to know how many acres an area is so I can plant it or put fertilizer on it or whatever I need to do, that's a great feature. Same way with the path. This is actually the driveway to Canner's Cave. Um, I typed in driveway. And then before I hit OK even, it brings up the distance in feet, 1,852 feet. So right away, I've got the distance of that driveway, which is a great feature that Google Earth provides. Before we had to just use a ruler, click on something, get the distance, but then it didn't get saved or very, very well, and it wasn't associated with the polygon. But now we can actually save it just by uh, creating that path or creating that polygon, and it'll actually save the distance with it. So that's a nice new addition for Google Earth. I want to use this for the ruler or a path. Um, these are, this is a tree plantation and the trees are six feet apart. And so I thought, well, I'm just going to test the accuracy. So these trees are six feet apart and there are 20 gaps in here. And it comes up 1.69 feet off if I actually got those trees planted exactly six feet apart. Um, I do usually stretch out a, a tape and measure that. So it's going to be fairly close, but you can see the uh, precision level is actually pretty good with Google Earth. And certainly if you're doing much longer distances than this, uh, it's going to be plenty precise for most things that people need. Again, don't forget when you're working your way through, always make sure you find this little window that will pop up somewhere and it's always in a different place. Sometimes it's in the way, you got to move it, but click OK when you're finished or it won't be saved. So what I really recommend, because as you create more and more stuff, it just gets piled up in this big long listing and it gets hard to follow. What I highly recommend is you create a folder to put things in for different properties in different places to organize yourself. And all you got to do is right click on the places toolbar and add a folder. And then you want to make sure you're working within that fo folder when you're creating things. If they pop up outside that folder, just grab them and drag them and drop them in there and they'll show up in the folder. So don't be afraid to, again, to play with that. You can also check and uncheck different things. So if you don't, if you got a bunch of things you've got on that map and you only wanna see the boundary, unclick everything else and click the boundary back and then you'll see the boundary. So that's a nice feature too. You can delete them just by clicking on them and so on and so forth. Lots of good information. There's also some other features that it's kind of a neat thing. I rarely use it, but if you want borders and labels, 
you want to add photos, even if you want weather conditions and cloud cover, that stuff will pop in roads on and off and so forth. I don't use that a whole lot. Other useful features under file, you can save things. You can save that file and email it if you want to share it with someone else. You can add photos and associate them with different things and share them. But don't be afraid to get on to Google Earth Pro and just play around a little bit. Um, here's an example of some mapping that I did on my property earlier on. And here's an example of what I was able to do with Avenza and files that I created in Avenza, emailed myself as a KML or KMZ, I can't even remember now, but you email the file to yourself, click on it, and it'll pop up in Google Earth. It is KML, so you're just going to create a KML file, and you're going to email it to your computer. And when you click on it, it'll just automatically pop up in uh, Google Earth Pro. And these are the things that I created in Avenza that ended up on my map. And you can see the detail is much better and much more clear. And those are actually paths that I walked, um, and it put them right on the map. The blue is actually me walking the boundary. The yellow is actually the boundary from the parcel data, and we have a little bit of a problem because my neighbor's fence is probably on me technically. But you can see how close my walk boundary is to the actual parcel boundary that is on the auditor's website. If you really want to get parcel data into Google Earth, it can be done. You can go to Google Maps. It's a very complicated process. I actually went and just Googled how do I create parcel boundaries and pull them into Google Earth or something like that. And it, it walked me through it. But essentially, you have to go to Google Maps. You have to click on Maps and Create Maps. And then you'll enter your address. It'll zoom in. And if you zoom in far enough, the parcel boundaries will show up on the map. And then you can trace those parcel boundaries. So you actually got to get deep into Google Maps, hit add a layer, and then you'll click on this and you'll have the option to add a line or a shape. And then you can actually go and export by clicking on these dots to KML, KMZ, and it'll actually create a file that'll get exported. And then you can pull that into Google Earth. So it's a complicated process. It would probably be a separate video in itself. If you want to contact me, I'll try to walk you through it. Um, but I think if you do a Google and find a video, um, YouTube video, you can work your way through that. So if you, that's pretty much all I have on Google Earth and Google Earth Pro. If you've got questions, feel free to contact me. Probably best to email me or give me a call and I will do my best to try to help you figure out how to do it. So with that, please take some time to enjoy at least part of your day in the woods. Thank you.